at uh, Mobile World Congress 2016. And who are you? Hello, I'm, my name's Neil Wordmuller. I'm the product manager for the Cortex R8 processor. And uh, last week you announced a new Cortex R? Yes, so that's, that's the Cortex R8, which is uh, a new processor from ARM uh, that's been developed um, from the Cortex R7. So it uh, doubles the performance of the Cortex R7. Um, it has a number of other additional features, such as larger TCMs, um, a fast path port per core to, attach, to talk to peripherals, such as DSPs or hardware accelerators. So again, it's giving a lot more performance um, especially for our partners that are looking to develop um, LG Advanced Pro and uh, 5G modems in the future. So this is uh, R, it stands for real-time or? Yes, so at ARM we have three, three different types of processors. A for application processors, R which are the real-time, uh, and the M's which are the smaller devices for microcontrollers. Um, so I focus on the Cortex R series, um, and again, yeah, very much, uh, very separate. Often not as public as many of the other processors because they're often deeply embedded uh, inside specific devices, be they storage, modems, or, or many other real-time devices. So you're in uh, hard drives and SSD, or? Yes, um, in hard drives, we're um, in all of the leading hard drives now. Um, have been for many years. Um, also in SSD is a very growing, very rapidly growing market where again we're, we're working with all of the key key manufacturers. How come you are the the architecture of choice for that kind of segment for the market? Um, I think one of the key reasons for storage is the real-time aspect. So certainly in hard disk drive when you're controlling a servo motor um, with these heads moving very very fast then the real-time aspect is critical. Um, when you move to SSD then what we find is a, uh, a wide spectrum of devices from the small devices controlling the flash and managing the errors all the way up through to consumer devices that typically use a Cortex R5 um, to manage uh, both the host interface but also the flash translation layer, uh, managing all of the tables that, that um, keep up to date with where all the different blocks are kept. Um, and in enterprise storage, we've seen success with Cortex R7 already, um, where there the, the IOPS are growing very, very rapidly every year. So very quickly, people are needing more and more performance and also lower and lower latency. Um, for financial applications, if people are using SSDs in those devices, they really want to have a very, very low latency and it has to be um, the worst case latency is what their customers are looking for so uh, if they're looking at real-time share data they can't have it but every now and again there's a slight delay on some of them they need to be there very very rapidly so from r7 to r8 is double performance yes. so the double the performance primarily comes from being moving from a maximum of two coherent cores to four coherent cores um, but also in the real-time world, the tightly coupled memory um, is very critical. The tightly coupled memory is directly attached to the processor, and it's typically zero weight state. So in that air, in those memories, um, you can keep all of the critical routines and all of the critical data, so that when an interrupt arrives, you can immediately start running it uh, and, and, and access it. With a Cortex A processor, they're very good at running Linux, and for overall average performance, very very high power. Um, but what may happen is that it may be instructions and data could be evicted from the cache. So when that interrupt arrives, then actually you've got to go through the memory system and fetch those instructions. TCMs prevent that. And with uh, the Cortex R8 processor now, we've increased the size so that each core can have up to two megabytes of TCM. Um, with Cortex R7, that was limited to 256 kilobytes per core. And the Cortex M doesn't do the R stuff? Well, the Cortex-M is typically, it's a very small, very, very low power processor. Uh, so something like the M0 Plus is perfect for the back end for managing flash. Um, at the extreme end, Cortex-M7 uh, now does have TCMs and caches, but that's the first M processor that has, has caches uh, and TCMs available. So they're typically a shorter pipeline um, and typically only run ARM, uh, sorry, thumb instructions. Um, for Cortex R, there is a lot more sophisticated programmers' model with special routines to handle any exception that happens. So it's just a, a more sophisticated processor. So the R has its own kind of like uh, programming world. Is it also Linux, or what is it? Um, what happens on R? So with Cortex R. Um, 
a, a key differentiator of, of, of the uh, A class is they have a memory management unit. And to run Linux, you need that memory management unit. Uh, and it's the memory management unit presents to the software a really like a huge flat memory space, um, so that applications can just allocate memory and work really well. But in the background, there are things uh, where you may have to swap pages of memory in and out. So doing a page table walk can take a thousand cycles or more. Uh, and in a real time environment, that you can't have that MMU because that just breaks the. Uh, the so what OS do you have? You have real-time OS of some kind of a... Which, who is yes. making them? So um, we have a whole range uh, of partners in our ecosystem that, that provide RTOSs. So all of them from, you know, Nucleus, ThreadX, Green Hills, pretty much you name it, it works on Cortex-R. And so they're all very happy about the R8 announcement because that's yeah. going to give them new work to do? Definitely, definitely. Um, I think it's a very exciting area. Um, quite often these are very sophisticated um, applications. So in a modem, say for 5G, where you're handling multiple carriers, you need a sophisticated RTOS that can really reduce that latency and provide the best overall user, user, um, user experience to the guys using the handsets. So you say that 5G is going to be enabled by this? It's not possible to do with the previous R? What does it actually do in the system? Uh, where, do you, where do you feel the double performance? Where does it go? Okay, so what we've seen as we've moved through from, uh, from, two G, uh, from initial GSM handsets all the way through Edge, 3G, and to LTE where we are now, um, and moving into LTE Advanced. Now, at this point, there's really a maximum. In, in LTE Advanced, there's a maximum of four carriers that are available. Um, so this means effectively four separate data paths, and these are all LTE carriers. As you move to LTE Advanced Pro, which is, which is coming up very shortly, the number of carriers increases, but also those carriers could be Wi-Fi or could be unlicensed spectrum. So there's a whole range of new uh, carriers. And all, to be able to manage each of those carriers is very, uh, very time critical. Um, in some cases, you're talking to two cell towers at the same time, and you need to then effectively duplicate that, that handling. So you just need more and more performance. Um, and that, that's really where Cortex R8 comes in. It, it's the fastest real-time processor available in the market at the moment, by right? quite con some considerable margin. So you announced it. How long does it take before people can buy uh, modems and maybe also hard drives with R8 or other stuff with R8? How long does it take? Um, Realistically, uh, we do expect silicon this year from some of our uh, lead partners. For modems, my s suspicion is that some of those early devices will probably be test silicon, where they'll be proving it. Um, to develop a modem typically takes maybe two years. Um, and that, that's really for hitting handsets, because it's not just developing the silicon. So once ARM delivers the, the technology for the processor, our partners develop that into a system on chip for the modem, or maybe including all of the application processes. Um, when that's ready, you still then have to go through the type approval process with all of the network operators globally. So modems do take some time to come to market. But in other markets, such as storage, I think you're going to see it very, very rapidly uh, deployed. The storage is also looking forward to R8? Yes, definitely. What can they do with that? So again, it's really about performance, but there's also some additional features we've added as we move to Cortex R8, um, which enhance the, uh, the error management, um, the error containment, uh, and really develop a system for, certainly for enterprise storage, where you're not, you really must make sure that the user's data is never corrupted. Uh, and Cortex R8 has some very, uh, very neat features that ensure that that can never happen. So you didn't just increase the performance, you added more stuff? Exactly, yes. So there are some areas where we've really enhanced the, the error, error uh, detection uh, and error containment. Um, and there's also um, other areas where we've um, just done some extra um, enhancements uh, to the Cortex R8 just to improve, improve things. Nice. So now you just go around, you talk with all your partners and uh, help them implement it. Exactly. And again, you know, we, we launched it today, but we've been talking to our partners for uh, a very long time. Uh, and actually Cortex R8 has been driven by our customers' requirements and, and what they're looking for uh, moving forward.